Welcome to Zion Fellowship's Bible Wire. In these podcasts, we discuss what the Bible says, line upon line and precept upon precept. Today, Ben Allen, that's me, will be continuing our study on the book of James. Settle in for the next few minutes and learn more about who God is and how he loves. Hi, everyone. In the last episode, James talks about the attitude of some believers who are not considering God in their deliberation, and it relates uh, to their future plans. And so he chastens his readers not to slander nor commit sins of omission. That's what that is. So in this episode, we're going to deal with James chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. I'm reading out of the ESV. Come now, you rich, weep and wail for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded, and their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lied on the earth in luxury and lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. And you have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. So back a few episodes in chapter 4 and verses 13 through 17, you'll see this similar content and style James is employing here. First of all, with the phrase, come now. And both sections condemn the pursuit of wealth at the cost of accounting for God of not accounting for for God and his will for this situation. The rich that James is targeting are wealthy landowners. This is a class of people who are frequently criticized in the Old Testament for the greed and exploitation of those forced to work on the land for them. And as we pointed out in this exposition in the first chapter, the term rich must be carefully defined in the biblical context. It bears not only an economic sense, but a theological one as well. In sorting out the degree to which one or the other of these nuances is present in any given occurrence of the word is not easy. But what can be said about the rich in this passage is that they are condemned not simply for their wealth, they are condemned for their sinful use of their wealth. Something we in the Western world, where amassing material wealth is not only condemned, or isn't condemned, but admired. We Christians need to come to grips with this point in James and ask ourselves seriously, when do we have too much? Something we spoke about earlier is worth noting that these rich people, in my research at least, seem to not be among the Christian readers of the letter. Rather, they are wealthy non-Christians who are oppressing, oppressing the Christian community. James condemns these with some serious Old Testament language. Weep and wail are the reaction of the wicked When the day of the Lord arrives, for example, in Isaiah 13, 6, wail for the day of the Lord is near. As destruction from the Almighty, it will come. Wail is only found in the prophets in the Old Testament and always in the context of judgment. See Isaiah 10, 10, 13, 6, 14, 31, 15, 2 through 3, Amos 8, uh, verse 3, Zechariah 11, 2, Jeremiah 2, 23, 31, 20, you get the point. James' denunciation of the rich picks up and develops a persuasive biblical theme. God's concern for the poor is reflected in many of the Mosaic laws that give direction to the people of Israel as they live in covenant relationship with their God. And in Israel's later history, these laws were often ignored 
The poor were oppressed and taken advantage of by wealthy, powerful office holders and landowners. As a result, the term rich can be occasionally be used as a synonym for the unrighteous. So for example, Proverbs 10, 15 through 16 and Proverbs 14, 20. The prophets take up the theme frequently, denouncing the socioeconomic oppression being practiced by the wealthy. Jesus, especially in Luke's gospel, issues many serious warnings about the threat of riches to genuine discipleship. In a saying particularly close to James's teaching, Jesus pronounced a woe upon the rich and warned them that their consolation in this world would be replaced by mourning and weeping in the next couple verses of Luke 6, 24 through 25, which says, But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are now full, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. In Revelation 18, 10 through 24, it's a, it's a lengthy woe that's directed to the merchants of the earth who weep and mourn over the devastation of the great city Babylon. Babylon. And in all of this, it's not always easy to determine the basis on which the rich are being judged. But although some traditions appear to condemn the rich merely because they are rich, let me be clear about this, in the Old Testament, at least condemnation of the wealthy people are almost always attributed to a misuse of wealth. Let me say that again. In the New Testament, at least condemnations of wealthy people are almost always attributed to a misuse of wealth. And certainly, James' enumeration of the sins of the rich people that he condemns shows that this is the case here. It is particularly obvious that James does not intend to pronounce judgment on all rich people if, as we have argued in James chapter 1, verse 10, it implies the presence of rich Christians among James' readers. This de- designation, quote, you rich, end quote, in verse 1, espe- essentially means the unrighteous rich. But having said this, I would caution against a tendency for Western Christians to dismiss as entirely irrelevant or unimportant the teaching of this paragraph. We cannot overlook the fact that the rich and the unrighteous are so easily associated. Scripture warns that wealth can be a particularly strong obstacle to Christian discipleship. Again, wealth can be a particularly strong obstacle to Christian discipleship. Jesus warned, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 19, 23. And James says, you, your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded, and their coercion uh, will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasures in the last days. Verses 2 and 3 are short and direct prophetic pronunciations. These provide us with the first reason for the condemnation of the rich. In verse 1, they use their wealth for their own selfish purposes. Plain and simple. James brings a lot of metaphor to the table in these two verses. Not only will they rust and be eaten away, their coercion uh, will testify against them. This is from Douglas Moo's Pillar Commentary. He says, quote, The last days is language that the Old Testament prophets used to denote the period when God would fulfill his promises, bring judgment on the wicked, and save the righteous. New Testament authors pick up this language, but the realization that the Messiah was coming to earth twice, once to inaugurate his kingdom and again to consummate it, forced early Christians to modify modify their conception of the last days. A great and final day, when God would complete his work, was still expected. But the initial coming of Christ and pouring out of God's Spirit also made clear that those last days had already begun. The already, yet not yet, aspect of the inauguration of the last days, end quote. James is saying that these rich people who are accumulating wealth in their day are particularly sinful. 
because they disregard the demands made on people by the display of God's grace in Christ. As those who live in those these last days, we too should recognize in the grace of God already displayed in the judgment of God yet to come as a powerful stimulus to share, not hoard our wealth. And James says, Uh, In verse 4, Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are coming against you, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. James may be drawing upon Malachi 3.5. I'll read it, and you tell me what you think. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will have a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust against the sojourner and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. We might remember from the previous episodes that James is drawing heavily upon Leviticus 19. Here particularly, we see Leviticus 19.13, You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired worker shall not Remain with you all night until the morning, as well as Deuteronomy 14 through, or 24, 14 through 15. You shall not oppress a hired worker who is poor and needy, whether he is one of your brothers or one of the sojourners who are in your land within your towns. You shall give him his wages on the same day before the sun sets, for he is poor and counts on it, lest he cry against you to the Lord and you be guilty of sin. James Accuse the rich of hoarding wealth in verses 2 and 3, cheating workers in verse 4, and living self-indulgently. And in the final verses in this episode, you have, quote, in verses 5 and 6, it says, You have lived on the earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. James here issues a climax in his denunciation. He accuses them of condemning and murdering the innocent one, which can also be translated as righteous one. James goes after the one who went after the one who did nothing wrong. The Lord of hosts will vindicate the righteous and innocent in due time. Next episode, come with me. James will remind his readers of this fact, and we must also remember this in our day as well. Thank you. We have reached the end of today's Bible Wire podcast. If you'd like more information about our church, or if you'd like more resources related to this podcast, you can find us online at www.zionfellowship.net. We're also available on social media. Look for Zion Fellowship. Thank you for joining us today on Bible Wire.